have another lecture of Toshi Omagari. He's a Japanese designer and uh, he will specialize, uh, or actually he will tell us a little bit of, about a very special program, problem, a very special problem of web fronts, uh, which is the implementation of type that is not Latin. So you, you are probably used to Latin uh, fonts when you look at screens, but of course there are other script systems in the world and uh, Toshi uh, made just recently his MA at Reading University in England um, where, he, where he designed a Mongolian font. And I'm sure you will agree when I say Mongolian script is a wonderful thing when you see it. It's, uh, it's a script typeface that is a little bit like Arabic, written in, in, like in one go, but not from left to right or right to left, but from up to down. So that makes it a little bit different in putting it on screens. You can imagine that. Um, are you ready? <laughs> All right, there we go. Toshio Magari. Hello. Is this for screen? Very nice. All right. All right. Uh, web fonts for non-Latin scripts. Uh, for the past few years, have we enjoyed the uh, increasing popularity of uh, Latin web fonts, but not really non-Latin. And what I was doing uh, research on, oh, no, research, no, studying at the uh, Reading uh, University, I, uh, yeah, I found out, found about this BBC Arabic, which uses our, well, one of our graduates' uh, Arabic typeface called Nasim. And I thought it was cool. I thought, yeah, I want to see more of this stuff. So. I started re uh, doing research on uh, non-Latin uh, web fonts after graduation, and came with came up with new quest uh, two questions: uh, How are they really popular now, and what are the technical challenges you, when you're making web uh, websites for non-Latin scripts or non-Latin typefaces? And I don't think I have to remind you why we should use non uh, web fonts, but let me, uh, let me do it uh, once again. Uh, we should use web fonts because it's searchable and because it's editable. You can correct mistakes very easily, you can update contents very easily, and you can also scale the website, the mag magnify and everything on the iPad. And most importantly, you can use virtually any fonts available if you think about non-Latin web fonts, there are two, yeah, two more reasons. First of all, uh, there are uh, no web-safe non-Latin fonts almost. Actually, there are two uh, web-safe non-Latin fonts, which are uh, Arial Arabic and Tahoma Arabic, which are crappy. And <laughs> some scripts are not even installed, like, like Burmese on non-Mac OS. And if you look at Mongolian uh, website, uh, this is a website of Inner Mongolia University. They are actually all static image. You cannot search all these words. I mean, this is an extreme case because uh, Mongolian typography also needs a vertical, a vertical writing system support on browsers uh, from left to right, unlike CJK. But there are actually some uh, Mongolian website actually uses uh, web fonts. But anyway, yeah, we have to remove all this stuff, right? And if, let's look at the uh, font foundries that uh, offer uh, non-Latin web fonts now. Uh, Fonts.com has Arabic, Bengali, Chinese, Japanese, all these uh, commercially profitable scripts, and Google Web Fonts Early Access, which are non-Latin counterpart of Google Web Fonts, have 
uh, more or less the same number of scripts, but more of minority scripts, I guess. And also notably, Japanese, uh, there are at least five Japanese web, web font services, as far as I know, only in Japan. One in, uh, one in China, none in Korea, but five in Japan, that's amazing. And it's not very easy to see, but if you look at uh, top 100 uh, most popular web fonts on our library, you can find uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Usually uh, between five and ten fonts are among the most uh, popular ones. But yeah, this number is increasing. And who is using non Latin web fonts? For example, Adidas using our Chinese, Nike using our CJK, uh, BBC Arabic using. Uh, Arabic, I think from Fontec, and Wikipedia self-hosting Arabic, Bengali, Burmese for compatibility reason, not for commercial reason. And yeah, I think these are the major non-Latin web font users. And by, uh, yeah, by this time, I, you might have realized that I'm not talking about Greek and Syriac because Although they are technically non-Latin, they are not practically so. They are Latin, basically. And all, sub all browsers support them, and all major web font services help them. So if, you, if your font foundry doesn't, uh, doesn't have Greek and Syriac, then what are you doing? <laughs> so yeah, I think, yeah, in, I mean, my sense, Greek and Syriac are minimal re requirements. Yeah, I'm being harsh. <laughs> okay, uh, technical challenges. There are three technical challenges you have to consider when, uh, or technical problems you have to consider when you're making uh, non-Latin websites using web fonts. First of all, it's a complex script. And the secondly, unsupported scripts by OS. And also a huge character set. The first... Of all, uh, complex scripts are the ones on the right, which involve uh, character repositioning, alternating, and reordering, unlike the ones on the left, which, uh, whose uh, this, uh, yeah, character display is pretty linear. So Latin is simple, Armenian is simple, Ethiopic is simple, Georgian, Japanese, Korean, Greek, they are all simple. But the complex scripts are like Arabic, Bengali, Thai, Tibetan, all this stuff. And to uh, correctly display all those complex scripts, there are three technologies available. One is OpenType, which is supported by most browsers, and it's more, uh, becoming more and more popular. And then there is also a code, uh, one called AAT, which is Apple Advanced Typography. Uh, as, it, as its name suggests, the uh, AAT font can only work on Mac, Mac browsers like Safari and Opera and also iOS. But AAT is more powerful than OpenType. And then there's also a code, one called Graphite, which is uh, more powerful than these, uh, the earlier two, but only uh, supported on Firefox. And you can actually put open type and AAT table if you have uh, tables if you have want to have your font to have a decent support on complex scripts. For example, then the next Devanagari, which has been released uh, last month, I think. You can, uh, I mean, this font can be shown from like any devices like Windows, Mac, even iOS. When you see this typeface on iOS, it, uh, AAT works instead of OpenType. And because AAT is more powerful than OpenType, it actually uh, shows better results on iOS than on Mac or Windows. And also there's unsupported scripts like Burmese on Windows, iOS, Android, I mean, no, no Mac OSs, and also Mac is uh, lacks support on Syriac, Mongolian, Ethiopic, and iOS. 
and Nasdaq and Japanese and all these scripts are missing on any OS. So if a font, uh, if a script is not supported by the OS, actually web fonts can display them. And if the script you have to typeset is unsupported and complex, you will surely need uh, a font equipped with OpenType or AAT or uh, Graphite. And Nastalik and Tengua in particular uh, needs something more powerful than OpenType. And if you don't know about Tengua, it's actually used in uh, Lord of the Rings, so it's a, it's a fictional script, but it's, it's still very complicated, so you, you would need AAT or Graphite. <laughs> yeah, but Nastadik is a, a, a kind of Arabic script used in Pakistan and Iran, and OpenType cannot handle this. So if, yeah, if you want to typeset Nastadik, then you would need AAT and Graphite. And the third uh, problem is that huge character set. If you're going to use uh, CJK, Chinese, Japanese, Korean fonts, sometimes a font can take up to 50 megabytes, which takes forever. And, but this is not something you, as a designer, have to consider. This is our problem. So yeah. For this problem, we have a technology called uh, dynamic subsetting, which is basically a JavaScript. And what it does is that it looks at your website and looks at the characters used and reduces the character set and minim uh, send a minimized font. If you look at the font size on the top left, this, is, uh, this one is a full font. I need uh, a three megabytes font, but this one is only six kilobytes, still showing the same result graphically. So, but yeah, this is, I hope this is available on any uh, web, font, uh, web font services serving uh, CJK. Yeah, we, yeah, we've had them, of course, and Google has them, of course, and all the Japanese uh, web font services have them, of course. <coughs> so yeah, but basically, that this is what's happening in the background. So, uh, but to see how they are really supported on current browsers, I've set up the testing pages and uh, conducted a uh, web font test based on uh, what was uh, what were available for free to me, which are fonts.com library and Google Web Fonts early access library, and set up a page like this. So I put basically all uh, non-Latin web fonts available from those uh, libraries and show, uh, saw the result. And what I was doing on this research, I came across an uh, official website of North Korea which uses uh, Google web fonts. Apart from the logo on the top, they use Google web fonts everywhere. So North Korea is a big fan of Google. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think I have to tell them that now Google Web Fonts also have uh, Korean <laughs> fonts. Yeah, they're gonna love it. <laughs> okay, right, going back to this web page, I categorized the uh, font behavior into three. Uh, the first one is LW, which stands for Lows and Works, so this is a perfect one. And the second one is a fallback, which doesn't load, instead it uses a uh, default font. And the third one is the worst one, which is LD, loads but doesn't work. So, it, <laughs> so yeah, it uses a web font, but it's actually the, the result is worse than folding back. So I think those three are basically what's gonna happen when you use web fonts. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell about the fourth one. For the scripts that are not supported by default, uh, can be included by the use of web fonts. For example, Ethiopic, which is a, a simple script. So, uh, so if you simply use the web fonts, you can see the Ethiopic text. But Burmese, which are complex script, uh, can still be improved by using web fonts. That's, this is why Wikipedia is using Burmese web fonts on their website. So I made a chart like this, 
the top one is uh, the behavior of default ones. Uh, because Remise is missing on many OSs, it, it's red. And Lao sometimes doesn't work. I mean, no. I think mobile devices, I mean, Android devices uh, don't support Lao as default. And yeah, most of the time, actually, um, all, the, all web fonts work, except, except for Android devices. Yeah, they all tend to fall back, except for Firefox, which, are, which is perfect. Yeah, this was a very interesting uh, discovery, because I was honestly, th I, I honestly thought that it was going to be much, much redder like, like this. Yeah, but it would it would have been uh, it would have looked like this, like if it if it was a last year or something. But now it's so much better. It's very green. Okay, to summarize what I have discovered, uh, now all the non-native web fonts are much, uh, bet supported much better than expected, and also mobile devices tend to ignore web fonts, but all browsers are being improved very quickly. And there is a reason for this. Uh, Ralph Levin at Google uh, talked at Google I.O. 2011 uh, and said that uh, for the most complex scripts, we are working with uh, the browser manufacturers, of course, including Chrome, to really make the support for those scripts bulletproof. Uh, one of the things that we really try to do in the Google web fonts is make all of the, our fonts rock solid. We don't want to have anything in there that only works a little bit uh, or only works in some cases. And yeah, we see their efforts. Yeah, they're really not pushing this hard and I really thank Google for doing this. So I think now the stop line is set. Now it's the designers turn to make awesome non-Latin web fonts and also non-Latin websites. So why not uh, join Make, um, making web typography much richer, not just from the Latin side, but also from the non-Latin side. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Toshi. Are there any questions? I'm sure you all want to know how this all works. <laughs> So this, this uh, automatic subset, dynamic subsetting looked very impressive. So you only need, what was it, six kilobytes font instead of three megabytes. Yeah. But my question is, is that then done if you click and go to a different page on that site? Yeah. Is it done every time you go to a new page, it, it still has to load these six kilobytes? Uh, or does it yeah. remember, ah, I already had some of these before, does it always have to reload? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what's happening in behind. So if you load a new page, it actually keeps the old font and loads only the new characters. So mm. if you keep doing this, eventually you will have a full font. Oh, wow, that's cool. Doug is doing it. But I, th I think, it, do I understand it correctly that basically this is mostly working well for like CJK fonts because uh, essentially sorry. there are like multiple subsets and you don't need to worry so much about the relationships between the glyphs like any ligature forming or something like that. It's basically just uh, CJK glyphs which are or sort of in the square. So, yeah. so these tiny little subsets can work in like a CSS font stack and just sort of fall back, right? Is that more or less how it, how uh, the subsetting works? Dynamics, if you want to implement dynamic subsetting, you have to put a JavaScript code into a page. Mm. And it's not about CSS, I think. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I was thinking mostly that it's the technique that fonts.com is using. It's, yeah. it's the dynamic subsetting works basically the way it works, it's actually only workable for CJK fonts. 
specifically, I think, because you can basically deliver a CJK font in little, in little snippets uh, every time you pack like six or 20 glyphs or so on, and it doesn't really matter so much because the glyphs don't interact with each other. It wouldn't work with like a complex script font. Yeah, we have been tr uh, trying to uh, experiment in this. Yeah, but I, yeah, so far it hasn't been successful. So, so yeah, but we are dr doing it. Thank you. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to make a pause. Thank you. We'll make now a break. Okay. <laughs> Thank you first. Thank you very much. Yeah.